we've hit episode four of Shane Dawson's interminable look into the beauty world, and it's time to learn about the $20 million deal with Jeffree Star. Although I was sort of disappointed to learn that that number referred to the potential profit of this collaboration, and not the amount in damages that Shane and Jeffree will be paying to me for causing my brain to atrophy over the course of this series. I tried doing a crossword puzzle after this episode, and the only motor function I could get my hand to perform was scribbling help me over and over again. Anyway, down here in the fourth ring of Jeffrey's Inferno, we get a sheer dusting of behind the scenes content along with a full coverage coding of Shane's personal home videos. As exclusive distribution deals are closed, initial purchase orders are placed, and YouTube millionaires become even more YouTube millionaires. While Shane tries to conjure sympathy for moving from one LA mansion to another. I guess for Shane Dawson, fame really is a prison. Only somehow we're the inmates and he's the unbalanced correctional officer who makes us laugh at his stand-up before he gives us food or water. Stay tuned for more cheerful comparisons just like that in another Shane Dawson installation of Clip A Breakdown. Ooh. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other content here on the web, and we crush it into pieces like an eyeshadow swatch so that we can look at each little fleck of mica and piece of pigment and say, yeah, that one's Jeffree Star approved, and nah, man, that's Shane Glosson Bossin, or whatever the catchphrases are, because at this point, we are on episode four of six, although I hear say in the comments that there's like more episodes with deleted scenes. Oh, delete all the scenes. That's my recommendation. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more Shane Dawson breakdowns like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know. Also, I've got merch and a Patreon and I've got a little bit of patience left for Shane Dawson. Let's just dive in, see what's up in the world of beauty. Do I need a logo? Yeah, you don't have to. It could be an icon of something. Oh, it could be... be... Yes, that's it. Uh -huh. Wait, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? No, no, not you, Jeffrey. I actually need a clean audio take of those steel plates banging together for my short animated film about wartime factory production called We Can Do It. I will actually be voicing Rosie the Riveter, a spunky factory worker with the vocals of an angel. Oh, well, tighten up those nuts and bolts to say screw you to the Nazis. Riveters, they talking about screws, get it? There's wordplay in the play, in the musical, it's Broadway. So Shane, for the first basically 10 minutes of this episode, gets sent some drafts from one of Jeffrey's designers for what his Shane Dawson logo might look like. Just this alone is actually tiresome because they fake all of this like artificial drama. The guy sends maybe five different drafts. And when you're working on something like the early stages of designing a new logo, then you would expect the designer to kind of throw you out a bunch of different ideas so you can pick aspects of each of them and say, oh, I love this one, let's go in this direction. I love that one, but let's refine this. So it's a really great opportunity for the creative person in charge to use their communication skills and be able to identify what it is that they're reacting positively or negatively to in all of the versions that they're looking at. But instead, Shane just kind of acts like a little bit like he goes into despair. He's like, I don't like any of the logos and they, they it just made me feel really nervous and scared. And it's like, I mean, you can feel nervous and scared that you don't like any of the logos or you can just talk to the guy who like is gonna fix it for you. And for that being set up as such a long, like seven to 10 minutes of them talking about the logos, they then drop it for the rest of the episode. So, uh, masterful, really crafting the story. I think one of my overall takeaways from the Shane Dawson series is that I've noticed how important it is for there to be an overall series arc as well as smaller episode arc so that I'm interested in each individual piece of content while also wanting to come back to see, you know, a satisfying narrative throughout all the episodes. This doesn't really have the individual arc at all. Every episode jumps around, it's spoiling itself in certain areas with B-roll, also, I don't remember Shane and Ryland ever talking about moving, but apparently that's happening. Oh yeah, I gotta get a pizza.
Well, by all means, make sure to include every second of that pee urgency. It really adds a very relevant layer of suspense. If you separated out all of the random, unnecessary shots in this episode, you would be left with like a 40 minute long version of that haunted VHS tape from The Ring. At one point, he mentions wanting a triangle shaped logo, and it cuts to stock footage of a lady drawing a triangle. Like, thank you, Miss McClarkson, for the geometry lesson. Now, what do you say we let some of these hostages go home? In this next scene, Shane and Ryland are returning to their house, their previous house that they're selling without any furniture. It's very hard for them. Whoa. Whoa. That's this is weird. What? This is so weird. Wait, what is going on? They took out all of the furniture and replaced it with staging pieces. I guess start by telling me which of those 12 words was most confusing for you. I love how Andrew seeing Shane's house filled with cheap furniture for the first time is causing him to think he's entered the upside down from Stranger Things. But honestly, I don't think Shane is doing much better in this tour of a house that you've lived in for years. Where am I? Okay, so that's the living room. Wait, where was the couch before? Uh, it was right there. I don't think the staging company made any structural changes to the building's floor plan. Again, if they had even mentioned that they were moving in any of the episodes before, I missed it. And I don't think that they did. So either way, it's interesting that they would expect me to care about any of this as much as they do. I'm also not intimately familiar with all of the different areas of Shane's old house. And I don't think most of his viewers were either, just from what they saw in a few videos. So when they keep going around and be like, oh my Oh my god, this table's different. Oh my god, that chair, what are these chairs? It's like, I don't know, I also don't care. It's not that this it should not feel important to him, I mean, it's a big life event, but this would be like a blog episode, like we're touring our empty house. I don't feel like it connect to what he's trying to say about the beauty community or the story he's trying to tell. With, I mean, what story is he even trying to tell? We don't know. It has nothing to do with anything, so it bothers me. It really feels like Shane was under the misconception that if it was about him, then it belonged in the series and it's like no if it matters it belongs in the series and frankly that means a lot of the footage of you can go <laughs> it still kind of feels like our house it just feels like <laughs> this is so cheesy it's like they just put makeup on it <laughs> you know what i mean that's so stupid sorry <laughs> it is so stupid, and you should be sorry. After four hours of watching Shane snort his way through this series, I swear I'm getting a sympathy sinus infection. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, stop adding that snort. I don't know, I'm legit asking, is that like part of why he chose that pig to be like an icon for his brand? Is the snorting part of his brand and that's why it feels so forced now? Whatever. Sarah, <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna keep you company at 2 a.m.? <laughs> hmm. How did Shane seducing the refrigerator end up being the most haunting mental image I'll walk away from this with? I'm not saying that Shane jokingly kissed that appliance with more passion than he shows for his own fiance, but I did see Ryland hauling this fridge to the dump the next morning with a jealous scowl on his face. Just saying. I mean, at this point, Shane's been working on this makeup collab for months, and he still kind of likes to perpetrate the idea that he's like, oh, it's so crazy. It's like, oh, there's so much going on. I wish that someone would tell me what I'm doing. And it's like, I think people are telling you. Today, I guess we're gonna be talking about like how many units we're buying or something. He said it's like a big thing and I'm gonna have a panic attack. This is kind of, you have to project how much you think you're gonna sell so that they know how much to make, right? Yeah, it's a big deal. Shane was like, something about buying units? I don't know, I'm too much of a baby to understand. And then Andrew was like, well, it's actually so simple that a baby could understand it, so catch up. I might be completely reading into it, but the moments like that you really see through the actor, he's like, I don't know, Jeffrey says like, I'm gonna be like picking units, I'm gonna have a panic attack, I don't know what it even means. And then someone who's like been in all of the same conversations is like, well, it means that you're gonna be choosing how many pallets to order from the production. <laughs> and then Shane has to be like, yeah, I know, it's a big deal. And it's like, Oh, so you do know. So once we get to the office with Jeffrey and Shane and Shane's business manager, they want to jump on a call with Morphe Cosmetics, who carries Jeffrey's line in store. They want to discuss the possibility of getting an exclusive distribution deal. So basically the product will be sold only on Jeffrey Star Cosmetics and in Morphe stores. I found these, you know, maybe seven minutes interesting where it was like, oh, the business manager is saying we need them to at least order a hundred thousand 
and we need to walk away with a pretty close idea of what how much they're gonna buy so that we can start getting the early lead times done because we have to order raw materials. I think it's really fun to allow makeup consumers to think about the product that way, like, oh, they have to plan six months in advance because they have to actually order all of the chalk and dust and powders that are pressed into the pans in you know the production process. I always thought like that raw material cost was very interesting working in cosmetics. And I worked in uh, probably brands that had much longer lead times. Like they're getting products and eyeshadow palettes out six months. And when I worked in a color cosmetics brand, they would probably plan for about a year in advance before launching. With everything you're doing with the series, it Amplified. needs to be beyond just cool, we'll buy this much stuff, but they need to support the videos. Do, do other stuff for you guys and for the actual collaboration. Wait, I know we're jumping ahead a little bit, but how come in that photo shoot, Jeffrey looks like a glamorous mummy while Shane looks like he was just pulled from a burning farmhouse? Jeffrey was like, I told the stylist how comfortable you are wearing clothes with a bunch of holes in them. So I guess we're just gonna really lean into that. I can't even get disrupted by the fact that we're showing like this cool B-roll for no reason this early on. I literally just want them to get on this big important phone call with Morphe and it's been 14 minutes and they won't do it. I'll stop. I haven't seen British music videos, so I know. Is it fully out? It's out. <laughs> no, it's not. I will pause this meeting and play it. <laughs> and you know Shane will include nearly every second of that song break in the final cut of this episode. Andrew, you better be using that little wrist loop on the camera because I want to jump through the screen and smash it so hard. There are moments throughout this series where you see Jeffree Star just like switch into high gear. Like he just turns on all of a sudden. You can tell he gets very excited before certain business calls and things like that. I can't find a meeting with that number. Oh my God. Or he doesn't want to do the collab. Is that the third thing? Things come in threes. <laughs> Campaign robbery block. <laughs> what the fuck do I do? Mate? <laughs> What's happening? Like, where the shade go? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did the caffeine from your Mountain Dew Baja Blast finally dissolve through the mucus lining of your stomach there, J-Star? He's acting very spirited all of a sudden, like when a weird kid discovers improv class. That clip looked like a community theater cast of the Rocky Horror Picture Show goofing off at rehearsal. All right, everybody, deep breath, because at long, long last, we finally get Morphe on the line. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Who's here? Relax, everyone. <laughs> What in the time traveler's wife? Uh, can't we just stay with the interesting moment that you've been building up to for 20 minutes for once? We always gotta be jumping to and fro through time space like it's an episode of early edition. We go back to Jeffrey's house, which for me is always a chaotic energy. Like, I just wanna swiffer these floors. Today's crazy because you guys are here when I'm like sneak peeking a reveal of like, my next palette. Oh, it's right. Just like, my next palette. It's oh, right. Just like, Have you ever met somebody who always tells you stories about themselves like it's the biggest news on the planet and like you're supposed to already know everything about them? Jeffrey seems like the kind of person you would talk to at a party who is like, yeah, so last weekend my cousin Patty came to town, so, you know, had a lot to handle there with all of that drama. Not pretty. And you're just like, I know you want me to ask you a bunch of follow-up questions, but I'm just gonna go make myself a plate and leave. Jeffrey's like, it's actually a huge day because I'm sneak peeking my blue blood collection. I just sneak peeked it. Like, does that mean you posted a picture of it on Instagram? Great, say that. He's like, so it's just been crazy around here. Just been so crazy. You got me on a crazy day. And Andrew's like, oh, because you're looking at your phone for something. To be frank, hand-holding Shane Dawson throughout this entire series has often left me too exhausted to shop and cook for myself. So I am more grateful than ever for the sponsor of today's video, EveryPlate. EveryPlate is America's best value delivery service. In the past, I've tried many others and uh, they've often been too expensive for me to continue using, but every plate really gives you the best quality ingredients for a much better value. Certainly a much more affordable alternative to takeout, which is my number one vice. These meals come together in about 30 minutes or less, and they work out to cost 50% less than meals made from grocery store ingredients. You can get all of that time back for relaxing, hanging out by the pool, watching bad movies, my favorite thing to do. Honestly, it's become very relaxing for me. I can whip up meals like this delicious food you're seeing here. All while the TV is playing, it doesn't require too much focus, and it's a great way to unwind. Get started with every plate for just $1.99 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering the code NICTORAMIA199. Now I hope you're full because we are about to get 
full of it even more. Finally, we get back on the phone with Morphe. And again, this is where I found myself interested because it put me right back onto those conference calls I used to have with like Sephora and Ulta and all of those makeup companies where it's like very brand centric. Ulta was like fun, fresh, real. And then Sephora was play beautifully. Mm. I would like try to work in those conversations and to my pitches for social support when we had a product launch, I'd be like, blah, blah, blah. We really want to bring in lots of relatable thumb stopping content that just really highlights fun, fresh, real aspects of this product line. So it's fun. I like being on this side and hearing Morphe's version of that. It seems like they use the word magical a lot, like Morphe magic. Assortment okay, review. Um, so we wanted to kind of talk through what the assortment is. Okay, amazing. So the, the main big daddy is the conspiracy palette. It's like blood sugar where it's very safe with a lot of danger. It's very safe with a lot of danger. It's wearable, but frightening. It looks gorgeous, but it smells like shit. You know, the lingo that they use in this beauty retail marketing world is easily the best part for me. I remember like being on one of my first conference calls with QVC and being dazzled when they referred to our new products as newness. They were like, our shopper is loving the newness this season. So we're really anticipating a, a lot of engagement with this next activation. And I'm just like, yes, bitch. Tell me words, make it sound so glossy good. They go into a little bit about choosing the layout or this whole thing. Oh, the assortment review. This is interesting because it's kind of the first time we get a cohesive like idea of what's actually in the collection, the pieces, AKA the assortment. Assortment okay, review, hi. Hi. Move on to the mini controversy palette. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I feel like the person who works at Morphe is like, who the fuck do we keep saying hi to on this call? Jeffrey goes, and we have some hot new products. Hi. And these business ladies are like, and again, hello, um, we would like to buy some. Oh, it's on this call that Shane reveals the clear gloss is going to be like an exclusive, the only clear gloss that Jeffrey has on his whole product line. You hear the people at Morphe who really latch on to this clear gloss. They're like, that we didn't expect. We really feel like that's gonna be a home run. You can tell why because they're asking like what the other shades are gonna be like for the liquid lipsticks and they're like well one's red, one's pink, one's rusty brownie garbage color and they're like great so probably not gonna buy as many of those from you. Our shopper probably goes for more red. So you can hear that they instantly know a clear lip gloss is gonna sell amazing because it's unisex, there's no color preference to it and it's the first of its kind from Jeffree Star. It has Shane Dawson's name on it and it's probably the lowest price point item out of the whole collection. That's like a perfect add to cart. You know, it's like even somebody who's not gonna buy the palette and the mini palette will would still conceivably buy the palette and the clear gloss. Or somebody who's just gonna buy the mini palette and the clear gloss, or the clear gloss is gonna make a perfect stocking stuffer for parents to buy for their kids. It's just, yeah, a home run. Also, we get a reveal of some of the other merch that Shane is going to be releasing with, I guess, killer merch. The bags, the backpacks, it's all, yeah, we're looking like really high profit stuff. There's a little bit of a worry from Morphe because Shane is like adamant about launching the product November 1st because he doesn't want it to be seen as like a Halloween palette. So Morphe's initial concern is like, well, that's basically ramping up to holiday. So it's like really hard to get you the shelf space and the full moment of branding on all of our store signage. But they're basically like, well, you'll work it out. Also, Shane and Jeffrey go and see final lab samples for shade revisions. You can see how much the lab loves Jeffree Star. They're like, oh, Jeffree's coming? We made you these cookies with your video thumbnails on them. Oh no, I have two. Two of the same. <laughs> I guess we'll do a giveaway. And I'll do a getaway because every time I, you pull that clown face, I start running. Imagine thinking you could just say something funny and then making a face and being like, and that's the comedy. That's the closest to comedy that I'm willing to go. Oh, I'm drinking a little mug. Ooh, it smells so muggy. That didn't make me laugh. That didn't make you laugh. Now we all just have diarrhea from how bad it was. That's, that's good. It's great. Yeah. That might be my favorite one. Yeah. Really. I love how Shane himself didn't have the patience to save his footage from the photo shoot until the episode about the photo shoot. That's because your show is too long, Papa Pick Me. Trust me, I would love to only be seeing the cool, creative, exciting parts of this whole adventure, but it's sort of anticlimactic for you to use those exciting parts as B-roll in much earlier episodes where we have no context for that photo shoot even beginning yet. We haven't had a little 
establishing thing being like, oh, the key art campaign shoot. We didn't get someone being like, let's talk about what's gonna be at the photo shoot. You're just spoiling the future episode in the middle of this episode. So it feels like basically you just like can't wait to start showing us exciting stuff. Guess what? We can't wait either. Just show us some exciting stuff. That to me is the strongest evidence that Shane was looking at this episode by episode. You'll notice each episode is like starts here and then it goes to one week earlier. And then we follow those two like week apart timelines or whatever throughout. And then he'll layer in B-roll over that, which could be through from throughout the whole 6,000 weeks that he shot for or whatever. So I think that's why it doesn't feel cohesive. He's following like two timelines and then using B-roll to decorate it from a global timeline. So there's just not a lot of cohesion. For to their credit, the episodes really start to be open about the fact that this whole series is basically an advertisement for this collection that we're going to be seeing come out. Cause that's their main thing that they're talking about with Morphe is like, you've never seen a product get launched like this before. For the series, the Morphe thing is a huge, I mean, it's gonna be a huge part of it. I would love for it to be. And kind of making it be like, cause I've never really, I've never worked with a store ever, right? I've only, I've never even sold stuff, so. Yeah, that whole thing where you sold your merch at Hot Topic stores was just like a crazy joint hallucination that we all collectively experienced while watching the first episode of this series. That's what you just said. Was there really no other selling point that you could hang your hat on besides for this one that was A, untrue and easily proven to be untrue, and B, doesn't really mean that much anyway? Wouldn't it be more exciting if the pitch was Shane being like, this is me jumping into the beauty community. You know, I've, I know people don't see me as a makeup person and that's why I partnered with Jeffree Star, the coolest, most interesting makeup guru around. After I learned about him in this previous series, I just had to dive into his world. And this is a product of that two worlds meeting, Shane and Jeffrey. And he could then bring in like, I really want to, you know, understand beauty. And I was so fascinated by the whole culture. So this is to show how much I love it. That's never the messaging he's able to give. He's a basically like, I've never sold anything before and I've never worked with a store. So if you're the first store that I work with, people are going to be like, that's a store. Also, it just kind of rings untrue. Like you don't have to say you're now going to be Shane Glosson, which is his makeup artist alter ego, and post these kind of not that impressive makeup looks for a few weeks, being like, I'm really practicing, guys. I'm trying my so hardest. Like, just say you don't know. Just say you don't know, but Jeffrey's showing you everything, and it's so cool, and you love it. But anyway, I love when they show us stuff like how they shoot the lip swatches for the website. So I really wish that they would give us more of that, but they're just giving us flashes of it as B-roll. Wow, are you filming as a fucking head? <laughs> Whoa. I pulled this clip specifically because I think like lipstick with a beard is hot and I needed to share that with all of you. This is another favorite moment for me. So good. Oh, I love that sound. It's like you guys pulling out. Listen, I'm not doubting Jeffrey's claim that he knows what it sounds like for someone to be triple penetrated, but I am saying it's most likely that he was just a spectator in the room while that was happening because that would split someone with his frame right down the middle, like one of those white gourds people put on their front steps during Thanksgiving. So Morphe comes in well over the like goal of how many units Jeffree Star's company was hoping to sell them. Morphe orders 350,000 units of both palettes, as well as, you know, tons of the lipsticks and the other products, the mirrors and things like that. And they're basically in it to be like a full partner when it comes to supporting the launch. Combined with the amount that Jeffree Star's company has to order, they're talking about like a million palettes, 20 million, dollar in retail of like value for all of the products. So it's the biggest purchase order Jeffrey's company has ever had to do. Thank you guys, I'm so excited. I'm, I never thought I'd be so excited about makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey said, <laughs> that doesn't sound good to the audience. Shane and Jeffrey both have this technique where they will just fill up the room with their laughter to uplift each other's terrible humor, which is probably the only reason why I remember Dane Cook ever being funny. There was always some guy named Kyle howling in the audience being like, <laughs> something like that happened at my dorm. Shane, Jeffrey, nervous, big deal. It's a lot of the same stuff, right? We're feeling that. That's overwhelming for me to hear. That would be my biggest purchase order. Like, at, at it a long shot. We're ordering a year's worth of last year's blood sugar in one fucking day. It's like, <laughs> 
Insert volcano uh, <laughs> clip. <laughs> well, Andrew, where is the clip of the volcano that Jeffrey asked for? You better turn this makeup documentary into a History Channel show about Pompeii. If that's what Jeffrey Starr, our Lord and Savior of the long white Thanksgiving gourd, wants from us. I don't know why it's so out of order. Like, now we're suddenly deciding the final layout of all of the colors. I would love to have a better understanding if they truly are deciding the color layout at the same time or around the same time as they're pitching the order to Mor Morphe or if this was decided well in advance. It seems like it's around the same time, but I couldn't know for sure. And it doesn't seem like there was any great effort taken to help me understand the chronology of all of this. Like it started in March of 2019. This could be goddamn June for all, I don't know. They, I need some better time layout. Beautiful. Really? They really you. changed the They're game. They're gonna buy it because they love you. Real. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. That's actually a little too much honesty for this piece of content. We're still trying to make it seem like there's a possibility this won't be a huge success. Shane is like, really? Do you really think people will buy it? Uh, yeah, Sunny. What? She, she has no reason to lie. She's gonna be making the same $17 an hour, whether it sells out or not. I don't really know her role or her salary, but my point is, it's like, why does Shane think people would lie to him to make him feel better when that's not their job? They don't care because it doesn't affect their whole life. And I mean, like, whatever. Also, for the $20 million deal to be the title of this episode, I want to see Shane signing the actual talent contract where it's like, oh my god, so I'll be getting a 30% split of Shane, of the 50% that Jeffrey normally gets. Like, give me some actual data so I can be like, oh my god, this is the part where Jeffrey's actually paying Shane. Because then it makes you see like, oh, so there is a business transaction to this like loving friendship that they're using as the basis of this whole partnership. Like, let me see some of that weird gray area where it's like, yes, we are great friends, but this is the part where it's like, all right, here's where we make our money. So, you know, whatever happens, no hard feelings or whatever. Like there's kind of a, not that acknowledgement of it. It's all the feigned drama about other stuff. I love this independent lip gloss brand, Jen Len, that I found on Instagram. Oh, do you guys hear that? Sounds like 17 guys fisting a mother can of tuna. That's Jeffree Star's humor. Can of tuna humor. Oh, put it in my can of tuna. <laughs> oh my God, we have to go to the next clip. You know this, I'm not like a money person. I'm not like driven by money. It's not like my thing. No, of course. The, the idea of making that on something with you, like making more on this than I've ever made on YouTube, like just all of that yeah, is very insane. Um, oh, why throw in that random B-roll from the darkest ages of YouTube? I would have guessed that Shane Dawson owned one of those terrible suit vests that they sold in the teen section at Target. It was literally the official uniform of TGI Friday. Friday servers and newly bisexual kids. When you saw Tim A show up to the cast party with his fedora and one of those vests on, you knew he was there to pound some p What's happening now? <sighs> nothing, literally nothing. Uh, all American. First team, bitch. Yeah. What the hell was that shot in here for? If there's not gonna be a Japanese water ghost standing behind you when you flip that mirror around, then this belongs on the cutting room floor. Floor it. Cutting room floor it. Ugh. See, it's annoying because I just know that either Andrew or Shane threw this clip in and then they're like, whoa, watch how it lines up with the music. So they were both like, yeah, let's leave it in. The vibe is very much, I'm a young filmmaker and I don't know how to self edit yet, which I think is a fairly accurate reading of the situation, despite Shane at some point tweeting that he feels like Netflix and other like legit studios unfairly snub his work. Do you guys remember that Shane Dawson and James Charles were like commiserating that Netflix was making a documentary about stuff, the beauty community. And it's like, first of all, it's 100% gonna be better than whatever this is. And second of all, they didn't even have to release it because it fizzled out. Like it's not even a trend. It just shows you how highly people think of their work. It's like when you're making YouTube videos, even if you are like someone with millions of subscribers, like people think that they're so A-list celebrities when you're probably closer to like a local radio host. You're a small fish in a big pond, not a big fish in any body of water. That's just the way that it is. And I feel like even if you're an A-list actor, you wouldn't be so pompous, right? Or a director. Just humility. I think it just kind of lacks humility. 
humility. That's crazy to me because humility is my middle name. Jessica Humility Jones. And I I traveled to this country on the back of a large brown bear who migrated from Canada wearing a wicker basket. Wicker basket? I'm trying to position myself as an American girl doll with a really cool backstory from the pioneer days. Oh right, remember 49 minutes ago when the struggling logo concept was set up to be the main conflict of the video? In your home, in your home, oh, on the phone, on the Whoa. phone. Well, good news, that was quietly handled in the background while you all continued to smear lipstick on your hand. Really masterful branding there, Shane. That blink and you'll miss it logo reveal is gonna make a lasting impression for years to come for anybody who encounters this product on the shelves of TJ Maxx. And that's a retail distribution burn. Ooh, oh, my Kohl's cash. What is going on? <laughs> LOL, she is so crazy. Love her. Andrew will just lose it at the drop of a hat. He kissed some foggy glass. Maybe it's not the most wacky thing on earth, but yeah, yeah, sure. I guess we should wake up the whole hotel with it. And that's uh, bringing us all the way through two thirds of this whole series, episode four of six. I feel like we're gonna get through five and six within the next like three weeks. This has been quite an adventure for me. And I'm actually, now that we're past the halfway point, feeling really hopeful about my life after this. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think of this one in the comments below and what other Shane Dawson or other content I should cover. Give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see more. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when we are arranging shades in a perfect color order for the color dory. Also, I've got merch available and a Patreon where you can access exclusive episodes and virtual watch parties and other benefits. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for buying makeup all the time with me today. I will see you next time.